In 2020, Kobe Bryant tragically passed away in a helicopter crash. It obviously sent shockwaves throughout the world. One of the most beloved basketball players ever, who was really just getting started with the second phase of his life post-basketball, unfortunately passed away. And what made it even more shocking, it's not that just he passed away, but it was Kobe Bryant who passed away. He really had this aura about him where nothing would stop him. The only thing that could stop him was himself. And one of the most defining moments of his toughness and determination was when he tore his Achilles against the Golden State Warriors. Most people, most mere mortals, would have got onto a stretcher, maybe carried out. But this guy, Kobe Bryant, not only did he walk off the court by himself, but before he did that, he went and hit both his free throws. So he got injured in the Kobe 8s. So the Kobe 9 was going to come out while Kobe Bryant was injured and courtside, not able to play. However, Eric Avar, the designer of the Kobe 9s, pushed through and came out with perhaps one of the best performing basketball sneakers ever, in my opinion. One of the best ever. And this year, on his birthday, Nike is bringing it back, releasing a Pro Tro version of the shoe. Nike Kobe 9 Elite Pro Tro Halo. Now, if you didn't know, when the Kobe 9s first dropped, the high version was the first to actually come out. This was the debut shoe. They eventually released a low version with engineered mesh, and they also released a low version that used the same flyknit upper, so the elite version of the Kobe 9s, just in a low cut. And this very unique design came from when Kobe Bryant was with Manny Pacquiao, the superstar and legendary boxer. He was watching him spar, and boxing shoes, if you haven't seen, they always have like a very high ankle and support area. So he was like, huh, why can't I do that for basketball? Kobe Bryant, ever obsessed with the game, he was the one that really popularized low-cut sneakers because he was watching soccer players play and he realized that soccer players didn't have more ankle injuries than basketball players. So he went with low-cut shoes. This time, he was like, let's go high. Let's go opposite. Now, the high-cut version of the shoe originally released on August 23rd for $240. Very expensive shoe. That is also Kobe Bryant's birthday. And what they have been doing is on his birthday, they'll come up with a halo colorway for one of the Kobe shoes. And what's really weird is on the same day, they released a low-cut version, but grade school sizes, not the adult size. Not sure why. So this shoe, the low-cut, is actually going to release on September 19th for $210 in the United States. And first impressions of the Kobe 9 Pro Tros, low and high. I know high cuts aren't really in fashion, but I think this is just so odd that it looks really nice. I love the silhouette of the 9s overall, just in terms of how it looks, like even this. This looks really nice, even for casual use. But with this extra piece here, yeah, I just kind of like how weird it is. And the Halo colorway, I mean, how can you hate an all-white sneaker? It looks beautiful. It's not like the most exciting colorway. There's better colorways than this. But in general, it's just super easy to wear. A pretty much all-white shoe, some black parts and the carbon fiber. Yeah, very nice looking shoe. I think the Kobe 4s are still my favorite in terms of just the silhouette or the Kobe 1s. Love how those look. But the Kobe 9s? Might be close, might be close. And usually when I have two basketball shoes, I'll put them toe to toe against each other, choose a winner and go through four different metrics that I judge them on. However, since this is basically the same shoe, one just with more materials, decided I'm just gonna review both the shoes, talk about it as one single review. Now, both the high and low version of the shoe comes with a flyknit upper. So flyknit, traditionally you would see it more on like running shoes and then all the way up to the ankles or pretty much shins at that point. It has the Mamba logo printed all over. Very, very subtle, but you do notice it. And you'll see on the swoosh for the Pro Tro version of the Kobe 9, slightly elevated. So this TPU kind of material is like raised, just looks slightly better than like that printed type of swoosh that you see from the 2014 version of the Kobe 9s. So I do like that change, similar to how they changed the swooshes on the Kobe 8 Pro Tros versus the originals. Just looks better when it's like embroidered onto the shoe. Now on the tongue, for the, both the high and low version of the Kobe 9s, you see Kobe Bryant's signature with this TPU Mamba logo. And the tongue itself, it is like vinyl. Don't expect like genuine leather or anything. However, on the high version of the shoe, you'll see a tag inside the tongue. So Halo, colorway of the shoe, as well as Kobe Bryant's signature as well. Now since we're on this tongue area, I have to point out for the high version of the shoe, I personally do miss the days of high car basketball shoes. It's kind of what I grew up playing with. So I do miss that. And I just like the added, not exactly support, because a lot of it is just placebo. It gives you kind of an illusion of added support. But for this shoe, because this tongue itself has no ventilation at all, 
you really start to feel like the heat and this like rubbing up against your ankles or it's not even ankles at that point it's really your legs after like five minutes i really started to feel uncomfortable in that area which is really hot just started feeling sticky and gross you really do have to wear like super high cut socks if you don't want to feel that on your shins so for me even though the idea of like a super high cut basketball shoe is pretty nice and practice yeah it's a bit too much it is a bit too much it also doesn't really give you added support because the materials itself it is like flimsy it's just like extra flight in it so it's not really adding like extra containment it really is just more placebo and moving up the tongue you see this very well ventilated tongue it does feel very comfortable on that part of the shoe where your feet kind of meets that area meets the tongue feels very soft almost got like this memory foam feeling to it and speaking of this area of the shoe this shoe only comes with white laces so no extra set of laces i think for this halo colorway since they're obviously going for like an all white colorway i think white laces just makes sense i would have really appreciated like an extra set of white laces just in case the white laces get dirty but nope they continue to cheap out and then on the booty of the kobe nines you see nine lines here so number one nine obviously this is the kobe nine and the second inspiration behind this pattern here is when Kobe Bryant tore his Achilles, he had to get stitches. So they thought, why not actually kind of make the design of the booty of the shoe where the Achilles is, just the same pattern as those stitches. And of course, since this is a Kobe shoe, you'll see this Kobe code. So on the lateral side of the shoe, you'll see that actually says masterpiece. On the medial side of the shoe, you'll see Vinny, Vidi, Vici, that stands for I came, I saw, I conquered, and Latin. That is commonly attributed to Julius Caesar, and it just totally suits Kobe Ryan's personality and attitude. Now, in terms of the midsole and cushioning of the Kobe 9s, both the high and lows comes with this drop-in React foam. So that replaces the lunar alarm that was found on the original Kobe 9s. And you see these raised patterns. And when you actually put your feet in, you do feel it. And it kind of takes a bit to get used to, kind of like the Kobe 6s. You do really feel it on feet, but it's not too much of a bother. So no big deal there. And React foam really goes after responsiveness. And I will say overall cushioning wise, for both the low and the high cut version of the shoe, it is very decent. It gives you enough bounciness and responsiveness while also keeping a pretty low profile. So it's not really losing that low profile feeling. I think most basketball players do prefer that. So I had no overall problems with the cushioning of the Kobe 9s. However, compared to like the Cushlon 3.0 found in Sabrina 2s or like the Jordan 39s that combine Zoom X foam with a full length Zoom Air unit, I think cushioning wise, I do prefer those. It just feels slightly softer. And as I get older, I do prefer performance sneakers that gives me softer cushioning, not super soft because that's not good for basketball. And it's also pretty much the only major Pro Tro that they make. If you didn't know, Pro Tro stands for Performance Retro. So that was actually a term Kobe Bryant came up with. He didn't want it to just be a retro of his signature shoes. And apart from swapping out the foam, not too much has changed. And that leads me to the traction and outsole of the shoe. So on the Kobe 9s, both the high and low, you get this rubber outsole and it does have that foot map design and just getting it out the way. The Kobe 9 traction is just one of the best ever. It is so good indoors, just grips to the ground, no wiping of your shoes necessary, unless you're playing in like the most scummiest and dirtiest gym that no one ever maintains. At most gyms, this traction is gonna make you happy. It is soft and thin rubber though, so if you're playing with these outdoors, the audacity, how dare you? Do not do that. You will wreck them very quickly. It is not meant to be durable outdoors. Now, when the Kobe 9s were going to Pro Tro, Eric Avar, who designed these shoes, he did a whole sit-down interview and he mentioned how the traction was actually updated on the medial side of the shoe. Specifically, they added an extra line. So you'll see on the top, like near the toe box, there is an extra line practically and functionality-wise. Not really quite sure what that does. The traction was pretty much perfect on these shoes anyway. So I was fine if they didn't do anything to the traction of this Kobe 9 Pro Tro. Maybe scientifically, they ran some tests and it actually makes more of an effect than I realized. But yeah, as far as I can see, traction is pretty much identical to the original Kobe 9. Now this shoe does not come with any zoom here, which is a little bit of a bummer. So it's really relying on that React drop-in. I do prefer if they put like two zoom air units or even just one zoom air unit. And you'll see on this shoe, put the highs and lows. On the lateral side, you'll see two pieces of carbon fiber. And then on the medial side, you'll see another piece. So that works really well. Support wise, it really keeps your feet in place. Containment, no issues there. The shoe does not feature any like midfoot shank plate or anything like that. So you might think there's not really like the best torsional rigidity, but I think the carbon fiber on the sides actually does the job pretty well. So in terms of support, really didn't have any issues, both for the high and lows. The heel counter works very good as well. No issues there. And carbon fiber, I just love. It is very, very, very lightweight. 
and it's also super durable and super strong so when they put it on sneakers more for it so another thing like a midfoot shank plate would help with is like kinetic energy return so this is really again relying on the react foam to provide that but overall i think support and containment side to side i think the carbon fiber as well as the flyknit does a good enough job at least for a light player like me if you're super heavy and you're like 6'6 250 you might have a different experience but i can only tell you how it works on my feet no problems at all and now moving on to sizing comfort and fit i am a wide and flat footer for the kobe 9 pro tros i just went true to size i think lengthwise width wise fits very well no heel slippage so i was contained pretty well in these shoes the ankle area very very well padded feels very nice for the low cut there was no part of the shoe where it felt too tight on my toe box the midfoot area the heel it fit just really well and it wasn't like a pain to get my feet into the shoe however for the high cut i don't know what it is Maybe it was placebo, but I don't think so because I was really paying attention to it and I was really trying to figure it out. But for the high cut version of the shoe, there was a little bit of dead space like around the toe box area. It wasn't enough or it was too much room or if I would ever consider going half a size down, I wouldn't. But it just felt slightly more roomier than the low cut version. And then comfort wise, I think if you're using this shoe just to walk around, it's really comfortable. The React foam is pretty responsive. It's not like the softest or like the most plush shoe. However, walking around casually, if you're used to like Jordan Ones, Air Force Ones, Nike Dunks, and you can put up with the comfort for those shoes, you'll love the comfort for these. And usually for casual and retro shoes, I give it a sole score, but those metrics in the sole score doesn't really apply to basketball performance sneakers. So no sole score for the Kobe 9s. But I do have a final verdict. Even though the Pro Tro doesn't really modify the shoe much, it was such a good shoe that perhaps you didn't really need to add too much to it. Would have really liked like zoom air units in the shoe, but yeah, even today, 2024, simply swapping out the Luna Foam for React Foam, I think was enough. The traction, the support, the containment, everything about the shoe, true to its name, does feel elite. So that's it. Thanks for watching. So inclined. Let me know what you think of the Nike Kobe 9 Elite Pro Tro Halo. Like, subscribe, comment, all the good stuff. And remember, tomorrow may never come. So wear your shoes.